The last thing we're going to talk about today is working on um, text and manipulating and playing with text a little bit. Not only using it as a frame for, for images, but also being able to manipulate the shapes of it and, and to make some changes in it. So let's go ahead and get our standard type tool. And I'm going to type um, my name, H-O-W-A-R-D. In this case, I can come in here and make it larger, but I'm going to just drag it, make it a little bit bigger, get it back to where it wants to go, and I'm going to change my font to one that maybe is a little going to be a little more appropriate. In this case, I can use Impact, just because it will help. While it's not a very elegant type, it will help or font. It will help illustrate my point a little bit better. Um, one thing about type at this point is it's an active font. Get our swatches out. Um, with an active font when it's selected, you can select it either one of two ways. You can select the entire object with your black arrow, um, or you can select individual letters or the whole thing with your cursor tool. Either way. When you select it, you can go in and change the colors to all sorts of different things, to patterns, um, to varying colors. You can change individual colors, you know, to give you some changes throughout or something like that okay now all of that's possible because this is an active font and you can go in and make those changes that way however you can't change it to a gradient you won't do it even though right here it says that it is one type will not change to a gradient or at least an active font won't change to a gradient one of the nice things we're going to change this back to red at this point one of the nice things about this is this is all considered a single object right now. And so if I wanted to, I could go to File, Place, and I'm going to put a photo in here. Now remember how we, we created a, let's put in, great, ooh, let's put in Wakeboard. Will that work? Yeah. I'm going to have to enlarge this a little bit. This is my... CBW um, Area 51 Wakeboard that is currently on sale at KSL.com in case any of you are looking for one. I'll make you a great deal. Just kidding. Um, right now, we've got a, a picture and it's below our font. Remember how before with the Napoleon, um, with the Napoleon's Tower image or the, the image that we did, we were able to mask out areas of a photo. This is a case now where I can select both of these and go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, and it will insert it inside that type. So if I decide to change my name from Howard to David, which would be awkward because my brother's name is David, and then we'd have two people in the family named David, um, I could do that, and it would still allow me to have that as, a, as an image. Okay, um, So that's just something to be aware of. Now, the more text you have, the more memory it's going to require. Um, to cover and to go through those photos like that. So anyway, that's a little that's one way to do it. Let's go ahead and type in again Howard. And we'll make it large. Okay. Now with this, because it's active type, we we don't have the option of going in and manipulating it very much. I mean we can stretch it out and stuff like that. But to really be able to manipulate it, what we've got to do is change the characteristic of it. In this case, it's active type. We're going to change that type to outlines. Now, in order to do that, we have to have it selected with the black arrow. We'll go to type, create outlines. And now you'll see that there are a lot of anchor points around this, and it treats it entirely as shapes. It automatically starts out as being grouped. Normally what I'll do is I'll ungroup it as soon as I've changed it to outlines because I want to be able to go in and manipulate and move things around independently. Now if I get the white arrow, this will allow me now to come in and to manipulate some of these shapes a little bit. I can come here and grab that O and drag it down. Um, grab the base lines for the R, things like that, grab the D, stuff like that. I'm um, to go in and create some variation in it. Now, it's a little problematic bringing down, trying to bring down the W because in order to maintain the shape, that that's not very conducive to it. 
So you have to, if you're going to do something like this, you've got to make sure that the font that you're using or the type that you're using is either appropriate for the subject that you're doing or you're going to have to be able to go in and manipulate it accurately so that it all still fits and works well together. So you've got to pay a lot of attention to what you're doing on that. Now, one advantage, another thing that I can do with this is I can go ahead and use this as a mask as well. I can use a single letter. Let's go into File, um, Place, let's get, um, we'll get, um, let's see if we can find something different here. Yeah, we'll get our gray Napoleon image again. Okay. Um, I'm going to scale this dramatically. We'll scale it to about 20%, like that. Bring this here and then send it to the back. Object, um, arrange, send to back. Now I can grab both of these. Go object, clipping mask, make. And it's going to give me that image or whatever image is inside of that. However, let's say for example this image is larger. And I want to put more of that information in there. If I select all of this now, and go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, it's only going to show me the D, because the D is the very last image, or very last type form that was created, and so when it was made into an outline, it's the very last object there, which means it's going to be the topmost object, and that's going to delete all of this here, or it's not going to delete it, you're just not going to be able to see it, because this is masking it out. So we've got to solve for that a little differently. In this case, I'm going to select each of these letters, because they're all individual paths. I'm going to go to Object, Compound Path, Make. Now as soon as I make that a compound path, I can select this. The computer sees this all as one path. It doesn't differentiate between what was done first or what was done last. I can select all of them, go Object, Clipping mask, make, and now we'll do the same thing. Just to see an example, we could do this with circles. Make one circle, um, and I'm just going to duplicate it by pushing my Option and Command, and then my Shift key to constrain it as it moves, so that it's equal. And then push Command D, and it will duplicate that automatically. Um, now, if I bring in a picture, file, place, um, we're going to come down here to. Ooh, spicy brownies. That would be a good one. Place that. That's a big image, so I'm going to scale that down dramatically here. Do 20%. Maybe a little more. Who doesn't like brownies? So get that in there like that. Now, I've got to send it to the back. Shift, Command, left bracket will send it all the way to the back. Now, if I select all three, what do you think is going to happen currently? If I go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, it only gives us that last one because that was the last object drawn. And the top, it's the topmost object there. So what I have to do instead is select this object, all three of those, go to Object, Compound Path, Make. Now that's different than grouping them. Grouping them is connecting three individual objects. Compound Paths are uniting those, are creating a single path in the computer's mind out of multiple paths. So all of this now is one unit. Now I can select all three of these. Go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, and it will take those three brownies and just individually, or take that brownie and put it between all three of those individual shapes. And then if I should decide to, I can always grab these portions. I can make them look like the cone heads, huh? Um, we'll grab this one and this one. We'll drag them up the same height. So now we have the cone head brownies. Okay? So in type, remember there are a couple things. If you want to manipulate type, you've got to change it to outlines in order to be able to manipulate the shape of it. Now that's really handy in creating a logo. I'll give you an example very quickly. Um, let's go to open um, J 
drowns logo and business card. Here we go. It's for a friend of mine. He wanted a, a logo and he's a good friend so I thought I'd help him. Here's an example. Here's the letter D that I, I separated the middle from. And then here's the letter J that I've gone in and manipulated the shape of that based on the interior of that D and a J in order to create that shape. Another example is right here. He's a photographer, so we have a J with a little lens here. Or here's the letter D that I've pulled out and I've created another circle inside of it. So manipulating letter forms will allow you to really create an interesting sort of dynamic. So the, the advantage to being able to do this is that you can manipulate letter forms and create logos, interesting display fonts and display type and headlines and things like that. Um, so there we go. We'll talk to you next week.